what's up today we're going to go over autoclave training part two so this is the actual official like the real legit intro right so you need to go through this before you start mucking around and playing with things especially if you over at cal state uc other university if you had a professional institution you gotta learn how to use it before you start playing with things right all right and as always a little bit more of a professional video so i gotta watch the language all right so here we go Right, so first thing first, CSULB, autoclaves. Right, first thing, outline, learning objectives, learning how and understanding what gravity is, right, gravity autoclaves, learn how to properly do things safely, how to keep autoclaves in operational condition, which means they don't break down, otherwise everyone in your building is gonna come at you because they know you did it, right? Contact info for people, and like I said, this is for Cal State, so this is gonna be specific to the LB, right? All right, all right, all right, right lab is not a test. When in doubt, ask someone. Don't just start touching and slapping buttons, man. You're gonna end up in a bad case. Right, so first thing first, autoclaves. They use pressurized steam and elevated temperatures to kill all kinds of microorganisms. So that'd be like the little bacteria, the, the what you call it, like yeast cells, or flies even, dog, like I don't know, whatever you gotta kill, they kill it, right? Bacteria, microbes, biomes, whatever, right? They use high steam pressure, and like because the steam's building up and there's pressure, dude, like it can go bad, man. Like it can blow up, right? It's pretty much like a big bomb if you mess around, like ain't even cool, right? So, and because there's so much heat, when the steam comes out, you might be able to burn yourself, right? So you gotta be careful. Watch out for injuries. Don't mess around because then that needs to costly repairs, right, man? Yeah, I know you ain't about to pay for it. Right, so here's how gravity sterilization works, right? The jacket is star charged, star charged, whatever. Right, starting to charge with steam from the steam generator, it generates steam, right? Then that steam is injected into the chamber. Then air is just forced in with gravity, man. You know, gravity is the thing that keeps your feet on the planet. Yeah, right? And then once the air gets kicked out, right, it gets evacuated. We call it just straight out, you know, it gets ejected, right? It's like, a, what's that thing? It gets evicted, right, homie? Air gets evicted. We gotta say evacuated. Whatever, same thing I say, right? It's like your fucking, it's like your homie Paul down the street that just couldn't pay the bill. Anyways, right? So then steam and pressure build up in the chamber, right? Then this hot steam, right? It's the temperature can't take it. Bacteria can't take the pressure, right? Pressurized steam kills all microorganism, homie, right? But keep in mind, right? Steam heat kills in less than dry heat, in less time than dry heat, right? So if it was dry, it'd take forever. But because there's some moisture in there, it got steam going, Bam, 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 got through side of the way. It kicks it with the quickness, man. Right? And it degrades nucleic acids and proteins via hydrogen bond disruption. We're disrupting hydrogen bonds. You already know. Alright? Right, so now pressure is just up there like crazy, right? And that's at 121 degrees Celsius for at least 15 minutes to kill off all microorganisms. Alright, next slide. Just for general guidelines as far as operating. Always use PPE, just protective personal equipment, or personal protective equipment, proper personal personal protective equipment, whatever, homie, stay safe. We'll go over that in a bit. Well, you saw that in the last video, you know what that is, right? Always verify that the materials you're putting in can actually deal with the auto clip, right? Not just any piece of plastic can be used as a bin and just tossed in like whatever, right? You gotta make sure that it's actually all good to go, man. So always check with your like lab department safety personnel whether or not you can use that container to actually go in the autoclave, right? Right, in the autoclave room, make sure to log in every time you use that, right? There's a login sheet for a reason. No one signs it, the department's not gonna keep that maintenance going, right? Right, verify the chamber is empty and clean prior to you using it, because if there's something in there, you might be liable. If there's something wrong, you might be liable. You might be safe, we'll go over that in a bit. Well, you saw that in the last video, you know what that is, right? Always verify that the materials you're putting in can actually deal with the autoclave, right? Not just any piece of plastic can be used as a bin and just tossed in like whatever, right? You gotta make sure that it's actually all good to go, man. So always check with your like lab department safety personnel whether or not you can use that container to actually go in the autoclave, right? Right, in the autoclave room, make sure to log in every time you use that. Right, there's a login sheet for a reason. No one signs it, the department's not gonna keep that maintenance going, right? Right, verify the chamber is empty and clean prior to you using it, because if there's something in there, you might be liable. If there's something wrong, 
you might be liable. You don't want to be the last one to touch it when it goes down. Yeah, you're also going to get blamed, homie. Like you got, so you got to make sure you got to make sure everything's in like working order, right? Right. Always verify that the door closes and seals properly at the start of your cycle. Don't just like throw it in there and walk away. You might as well hit start and you might as well wait for the cycle to start, man. Like, just give it a couple seconds, homie. You'll hear a build up pressure. You'll hear a beep. And you know it's going to go, right? Always come back for your things in a timely matter. You know, it's like using a public laundry, man. You don't just leave your there all night, right? You got to come back for it and take it out, right? Never leave your things there overnight. Sometimes, most of the time, that's going to stop the autoclave from going down to a restart or flush cycle. All right, and we need that start cycle, man. We need that flush. Keeps everything nice and going or else, you know, operations ain't going to be so operational, right? So autoclave, autoclaving materials, right? You got yeah. All right, man. So now we got autoclaving materials, right? You got most aqueous solutions and media like buffers, liquids. Don't put acids. Don't do that. Like you need to double check with your lab mates and be like, yo, can I autoclave this at all times, right? Then you got heat stable plastics like pipette tips, micro tubes, whatever, what have you, and glassware, right? Okay, cool. Now seven major items and materials that cannot, as in no way, no, don't even try it for like no. All right, like we told you once, we told you twice, don't do it. That's the third time, fool. Don't try. Don't even think about it, homie. Right? Don't don't be autoclaving acids and bases, phenols, or flammable liquids. Like I said, pressure, heat, probably not gonna be good. All right, no radioactive materials, and be careful and make sure you use proper containment. Don't use things that are non-heat stable, like they're gonna break down just because it got high. And, uh, like you, you're about to ruin the whole equipment for everybody, dude. Right? And then check with the, uh, your lab safety people. Make sure you're not using BSL2 or higher for final waste cycles, right? You got you have to contact your safety office directly for those things, right? Right? So you got to make sure you keep that in watch, right? So next up, we got secondary containment, right? Because you don't want things just melting and just getting everywhere and just destroying the autoclave. So you got to use like a container, right? You got to use secondary containment. But not everything is fine, right? Like not just any piece of plastic can be autoclave. So make sure you use the proper things that are like autoclave safe, all right? Then you gotta keep in mind that whatever you're autoclaving has to be in the container. It's two times the volume, right? That's like the space in it. You have, it has to be twice the volume of what you autoclaving. So if you got like a one liter bottle, you need to autoclave that in like a at minimum, like a two, maybe three liter like tub, dude. Like you can't just be like, oh, well, that's like, man, that guy now way like one liter, it's close enough. No, dude, just right. You gotta make sure it can be heat stable and withstand that temperature. Right? Never just assume that's oh, that's all good to go, homie. Right? Considerations when autoplaying. You always gotta be considering in a lab environment. Otherwise, people just gonna hate you. And when you need help, ain't no one gonna be there for you. Right? So standard trash. Standard trash, no small particles of dirt, leave unsealed with steam can circulate. Trash bags with small particles need to be sealed, right? Blow around so that way the steam particles get in there, boom, boom, right? If you have nothing but dry trash, you might want to pour a little bit of water in there just to create some steam so it kill everything, right? Don't overfill your bags, homie. Like, if you can't close the bag, then you obviously you ain't no good. Like, you know you got to empty it out a little bit and put some of that in another bag, dog. Like, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. It's overflowing. Nah, like if it doesn't close, you already know it's not good enough, right? Plus it's gonna fall over and just spill. It's not worth it, right? And don't overload the chamber. If you have to start cramming just to get things in there, nah, man, it ain't, even, it ain't even worth it. Cool, right? Right? Don't overfill bags. Always loosen the sealed containers. So if you got a bottle, you got to loosen it because you're about to have a lot of pressure build up in there. The pressure go boom, man. You already know. You gotta figure that out, right? It takes longer to sterilize water as volumes increase. So. More, the more volume you got made, the more issue you got on the container, the longer that's going to take to sterilize, right? Never fill a vessel greater than half its capacity, which means if you got like a, a liter, right? That's like what, a uh, thousand mils? Don't want to go past 500 mils, dog. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your solutions, you're going to split that between two containers, and then you're going to autoclave it. You don't want to be like, oh, no, it's fine, dog. Yeah, it's so close. Don't do it, right? Common use autoclave cycles for your ass CSULB. We got the unwrapped, wrapped, and glassware, right? So the wrap, unwrapped is good for like metal equipment, tubing. Uh, it's, you know, things are not wrapped or packaged, right? So it's only 15 minutes at 121 degrees. Wrapped is good for pipettes, microfuge tubes. 
etc., etc. Good for your like containing plastics, whatever. Right, 15 minutes at 121 with a 30 minute drying cycle. Right, with a quick pressure release. Glassware for items made out of glass. It's in the name. You already knew that. I didn't. Yeah, I know you smart. Right, with a quick release. 125 degrees for 15 minutes. Right, with a 30 minute drying step. And then you got your liquids. You got liquid 15, you got your liquid 20. Some places might have a liquid 30. It depends on how your autoclave set up, right? Boom, boom, boom. And then you have your waste cycle, right? You got you have to autoclave your waste before you toss it out and make sure everything's all good to go. All right, homies. Now we on like waste containment, proper and improper waste containment. So up top, you can see proper waste containment, right? So you got the little box with the bag in it. It's an autoclave bag. It's not just any garbage bag, right? You got to make sure you use the right bag, homie. Right, and as you see, it's all fully contained in the box. Right, under that, you got improper containment. You can see it's just spilling, obviously overloaded. They put way too much stuff in that. If the bag, if the bag don't fit in the coffin or the vessel you're putting it in, you gotta empty out that bag a bit, son. You ain't know. Right, then caution, right? Autoclaves are hot. They are hot, dude, they, they got heat, right? The steam can burn you, right? Autoclave items are hot. It's like when you take something out the, the oven, right? It's hot, right? If you don't have an oven, like if you put a plate in the microwave for like five, 10 minutes, you take it out, you're like, ah, right? It's going to be like, ee, chingalo way, it's fucking going to burn me. Like, you already know. So be careful, right? And I'll see common use autoclave cycles. Always, always, always flush the cycle generator. Just always flush, always flush your autoclave, man, right? Steam generator must be flushed to prevent buildup of mineral scale. Right? Otherwise, it's going to go down for days and then you got to get a repairman and that's just costly. Boom, 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 right? You have to check the pressure gauge, right? Turn on the generator drain valve, which is yellow, right? You just boom, you just pull that to the side, close it, hit the start button, and let it go for its five minute, let it go for its five minute cycle, open it, hit the valve again, put it back to its original position, close it and hit continue. Pretty simple. Right now we got our list of important contacts. I'm gonna skip this because if you're going through this, you probably have your own list of contacts. You have your own people at your own industry, your own facility, your own campus, your own what have you, man. All right. And for uh, further training, you contact the people down below. Uh, and they'll instruct you one-on-one -on -one or go check out the other video we did. All right, man. So that's it for this episode of Cholo Science. Y'all be pimping, y'all keep safe, y'all do your thing, man. What up? So we got a quick uh, Cholo Science edit to do because uh, I was told by some clientele in the building some shit's going wrong, some shit's not right. So now we gotta go over this. All right. So when it comes to being to flushing the autoclave, don't be nervous, don't be scared, right? You just gotta pull it from the top. Good. As you see, there's nothing in here that's gonna bite you. There's no monsters. There's no spiders. There's no little alligator. Right, there's nothing in here that can hurt you. Right, and then to make sure you guys understand, you want to pull. Make sure you guys understand, you want to pull this lever towards you. So you want to pull this lever forward. Right. That's pretty much it. So never be afraid to flush your autoclave. Right, it'll be worse if you don't. And then once you're done, you just gotta close it. And you're good to go. Alright, homies, that brings us to the end of another video. So, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Keep it going, Cello Science. Johnny, I'm out.